All right. Woo. Okay. Happy Friday. Back again. This is awesome. And uh, yeah, a really fun one this week, actually. I think, well, we had two. We had the one from the week previous, which we can take a look at. But uh, I mean, hey, the title of this was the the six old plus react equals awesome. So yeah, let's take a look at the six old stuff. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but it's really pretty cool. There's a standard that was from 1988, all the way from when I first started coding, uh, that works on VT 330s that actually allows you to do uh, in terminal graphics. So it uses an uh, escape code like everything else that has to do with the terminal. And you can put in high resolution graphics. For example, I've been doing uh, this one for a while now on my in my ZSHRC. I basically have image cat, and then I've got a, a, a file full of all the stuff that I use to build out these videos. And we'll use, for example, the BCC logo. And let's see, I'll do it in the, the 300 size. And that gives me that nice little logo down there. And even cooler, it can be absolutely uh, full scale in any, with any bit depth as well. So let's go over to my, my desktop pictures where I have, you know, pictures of the kid for the desktop and all that. Uh, let's see. I'm, not, I'm just going to pick one at random because they're all, you know, pretty safe pictures. And there you go. Cute picture of the kid. So, I mean, that's like a, a full bit depth image that you can run through this image cat. So image cat is going to take uh, any kind of JPG or PNG, and it works within this iTerm2, which is a freely available uh, community supported terminal replacement for Mac. If you're on Windows, actually, I, I kind of left this open ended in the original video that I didn't know of any, I don't use Windows, so I'm not super familiar, familiar with that ecosystem. But as it turns out, uh, somebody said, oh yeah, you know, no problem at all. There's actually this uh, Minty, M-I-N-T-T-Y, uh, that supports image display support and also Sixel graphics support. And so all the stuff that we can do with all of these, uh, these little apps that I wanna show you, you can do in that. So if you're on, Mac, then you want to be doing, well, my personal favorite is iTerm2. There's just all kinds of great stuff with iTerm. Uh, and then if you're on Windows, there's a whole bunch of options, including, I guess, this this Minty, or I think there's another one called Gitbash. So all kinds of good stuff in there. Um, okay, let's go take a look over at uh, the Sixel Graphics stuff first. So the project is over in GitHub has these five directories associated with it. So I'll bring up the uh, the readme and then put in, let's see, preview. So you can have a look at this. Mark down preview up on the side. There we go. So the first thing you'd want to do is copy this image cat, which actually is just from the iTerm folks, and copy that into you know, your user local bin so you can use it anywhere you are. Uh, and then each one of the examples in here, you basically yarn it, you yarn build it, and that goes and does some uh, babblification. And then you do uh, a silent start. And the reason you do the silent is you pull off the, the little preamble that yarn puts on, you know, hey, I'm gonna run these, <laughs> these commands. And at the end, how long it took. Super informative if you uh, like that sort of stuff, but not, not great if you just wanna show an image. Thanks, Lavish. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at some of the really cool things here. So we've got a, a basically a starter kit. If you just want to take a React app and make a web page and then get that converted over into an image and then put on your terminal, there is there are two versions of charting that we can use to, to play around with. There is a, uh, the simplest one I have is Slack status, and I'll show you that in a second. That basically just goes and gets the current service status for Slack and puts it in into your terminal, which is kind of cool, I think. And then there is a cute little ex thought experiment called Thought Bubbles, which just basically does SVG and creates these. Um, hi, Miguel. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 
yeah. So and you know, let's just let's take a look at a couple of these things. Looks like it's just you and me today, but that's cool. Um, all right. Anyway, so let's look over at Slack status. So all we're gonna do is gonna bring up Puppeteer, and Puppeteer is a uh, an automation system for basically really for testing web pages. It's a headless Chrome automation system. So you can bring up browser, the browser, which is headless Chrome. You can then go to a new page in that browser. You can then go somewhere in that page. In this case, we're going to go to status.slack.com. And that's going to bring up this. Turns out, hey, Slack is alive and well at the moment. That's, that's cool. So I'm going to go over here to Inspector. And then what we see is there is a div with an ID services that kind of wraps this whole kind of table in here. So that seems like a, a prime target for something that we'd want to screen grab. So that's what we do. We basically wait for pound services and we get that element. And this is basically just a, you know, a, a, the equivalent of jQuery. Uh, and then we do a screenshot on that. We tell it that the output format is going to be PNG. And we want to put it out to dev standard out, which basically standard out, which means that this thing is going to be that when you run it, it's going to everything it's going to send out to, to standard out is a binarily encoded PNG. And then we close the browser. So why does that work? Well, what we do is when we start, we actually run this bin launch command. And what that does is fire up a child process. It runs the compiled code, which again outputs that PNG, and then it pipes it through that image cat that we then, uh, that we capture the output from, because what image cat is going to do is basically turn that into a terminal escape command. And then we just output that. So let's see how we do. Should work. So let's go over to that directory, TMP Sixel graphics, go into, uh, what is it again? Slack status. And then we have already compiled it. So let's just do yarn silent start. And there you go. There's our, our Slack status. It's been reformatted slightly because uh, that's the, the, the virtual browser that you fire up when you fire up headless Chrome is actually uh, tall and fairly narrow. So, uh, and you, but you can change that. That's just an option that you can use. I think most people, when they use uh, uh, browser automation, they're looking to do like mobile testing. So I think the, by default, the browser is sort of in a, at, a, at a, like an iPhone size, or so it seems. Anyway, so pretty cool. And that basically, again, these are all like, this is a toolkit of projects. So if you've got a service like, a particular like AWS page that you always want to just have it at, at, at the ready and you want a command out of that. Here's a nice little thing where you basically just change out this URL, change out this, this uh, ID here, and you've got yourself a, a nice little page exporter. So that's really cool. Uh, one more thing about this, and all the projects work this way. If you're unfamiliar with this, this is this package JSON specifies a bin, which means that when you install this globally, that you can then run this as a regular command in the shell. So once you've installed it, you should be able to, and I'm, let's see if I've actually done this. Uh, can I run Slack status? I cannot. Let's, let's just try and do it. Yarn link. That's going to basically globally install this guy. Is it not? Can't find package JSON. What? Uh, okay. That's fine. Uh, how about NPM link? I think that's right. Wow. This takes a while. Oh, cool. Hi, Anthony. Nice to meet you. Are you setting up on microphone ends? What do you think about... Um, here, let me rehash and see if we now have this command. Slack status. And it looks like we do. And... Yeah! Cool. So there you go. Right? How cool is this? 
This is basically, can you imagine that all of this functionality, like the ability to put high resolution graphics has been sitting around in our terminals since basically 1988. And, and we just kind of forgot. It's like, whoops, whoopsie. Um, yeah, so I think this is really, really cool stuff. Okay, so let's see what other projects we have in here that we can, we can play around with and have some fun. So here's one called Thought Bubble. And it's the start of basically going and rendering different types of HTML content into that uh, puppeteer context, that headless Chrome. And so this one is essentially just like a, the static version of that. I just happened to go and just put those in as string constants, but you could bring those in from files if you wanted to. So I basically define a set of styles as well as a piece of SVG. And then I create an HTML blob that has, you know, basically just a HTML. The important thing here is we're defining this ID of constant, uh, or sorry, this div with this ID of content. And then when we launch that puppeteer browser, we instead of going and doing that go to, which would go to a particular URL, we in instead set the content of that browser to that HTML content. We then wait for that pound content div. And we do exactly the same thing as we did before, we're adding a little bit of width and height specification, but you know, basically the same thing. So let's go take a look and let's see thought bubble and let's yarn silent start that. There you go. Cool. And now the really fun thing about this one is if you want to make some memes, it's like a mini meme maker. You can imagine adding like a, a command on a commander onto that so I can like set that text value or whatever. And I can go over here to uh, my profiles, my window. I can set the transparency to all the way back. And now I just have this kind of movable overlay that I can then go and take this and put it, you know, kind of wherever I want and then take a screenshot of that. And if you notice, here's a real subtlety thing. It, it actually, this Sixel stuff, or at least has it's implemented in iTerm, supports absolute full alpha transparency. So you can actually start, like this is 100% opaque, meaning that it's, it's just pure white. And then this is 90% opaque, 80% opaque, 70% opaque. And you can start to see how, wow, I can't even get, oh, there it is. Um, you know, how, how you can actually start to see letters through it. So it's actually really cool. And so I, I thought that was really neat too, that you could do the, the transparency stuff. This is just one of those like really fun things. Impress your friends, maybe do something something cool with it. I can't wait to see what people come up with. Uh, hi, Mortita. How you doing? Thanks to have you, have, you, have you here and ask any questions you like as we go along. This is kind of a free flowing thing. Yeah, it is cool. I think it is actually. That's, yeah. Okay, so uh, if, you if your starting point for wanting to play around with this is I just want to put my HTML content in there. This thought bubble experiment is a nice little place to start. Again, these are all just starter kits for you to play around with and experiment with. And they really depend on your comfort level with a particular set of technologies. So kind of building on that, uh, if you are more a fan of React, I've got a project here called React to Sixel which basically does, has a kind of nice extra stuff on it. It's got Babel, it's got presets for React and all of the stuff that you need to make React really work. All that stuff set up for you, ready to go. So we've got our little React app over here. It's basically gonna go and you know, put an H1 in there. We'll say, happy Friday. Woo, yeah, okay. Siberia, that's going to be colder than Portland. That's impressive. Hi, Postal. Um, okay, so let's try this one. So React to Sixel. And then because I made a change, I'm going to do Yarn Build. And then I'm going to use Yarn again that with that silent start thing. And there you go. Happy Friday. So... Again, I, I did the trick with the alpha transparency stuff. So let's give myself a nice like background to look at again. So let's go over here. I'll go to window. 
Oh, there we go. Nice. Uh, let's go to Norway. How about that one? There you go. Are you going to show me Norway? I'm going to, oh, wow. Look at that. That is cool. And so you can see that now we can actually see the background of Norway and that nice chip back there uh, through these, these surfaces. And what that is, is another SVG that I played around with. But I'm just filling it with essentially white. So R is 2 5 G is 2 5 B is 2 5 which when you sum it all up means white because we're in, a, in, in the light context of color. Um, and then I do it at is RGBA, which means that the last element here is the alpha transparency. And we, I use it at what, 0.1. And that gives you that nice and kind of 10% gray back there or 10% white fill. And then on top of it, a 20% white fill right in here. And so that, that's really cool. Anyway, as I say, it's, it's super cool that you can go and do uh, that kind of alpha transparency as well. Okay. So, and then I was thinking, oh, you know what would be great is if we could do charting. I mean, that's kind of the thing that you want, right? You know, you go and you're... Maybe you're a back-end person and you're monitoring your GraphQL server and you want to go and see how the cluster is going. Like, you know, you just want to go graph some data. So can I use out of the box something like React Viz, which is a, a uh, visualization set. It supports a whole bunch of different graphs. Uh, grab a screenshot of the HTML generated for the report. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Oh, hey, here's something cool too. So check this. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me, let me show you this and then I'll show you like how this even gets poof, cooler. Uh, okay. So again, we're using React and now we're going to use this React Viz library and you know, just basically to show that you can do this kind of stuff. Um, oh, I forgot to go over this. So the, it's a little more complicated. In this point, we were doing render to puppeteer. We're giving it the app as well as the styles. And then down in here, we do the same sort of thing as we do from before, but now we're doing essentially SSR in place. So we're using the same thing that you do, would do if you were doing like Next uh, Next.js does or any SSR React framework is going to be doing this. They're going to reuse React DOM, render to string, which is going to be basically taking the app, rendering it and turning it into HTML and putting it in the page. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much exactly like what we did before with puppeteer. So let's go take a look and see how this goes. So it was a, it was a React Viz one, right? Oops. React to Sixel, React Viz. There we go. And let's do that again, that yarn silent start. And boom, bar chart. Not exactly the world's most beautifulest bar chart, but, but cool. Let's go make a change to see, uh, is, there, is there a way that we can like make the color a little bit different? Because the colors, they're just ugh. Uh, oh, maybe it's automatically picking the colors for us. Um, yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't call this the prettiest graphic, but it it's nice. Oh, and the one thing I kind of wanted to show here as well is you can actually, in your terminal, pull this off, and it's just a PNG. And then you drop it, like you could drop it on the desktop and get a copy. You could drop it in email and Slack, whatever you want. You know, hey, boss, look, our servers are falling over. If you let go, it'll actually tell you where that file is. So you could actually, I guess, open that file up. So really cool. Uh, and then finally, our last example for the Sixel stuff. And, you know, throw out any ideas you got, because I would love to do, I think I'm actually going to do a follow-up video on this because people kind of self-select Windows versus I versus OS X. I'm probably going to do another one of these with with Minty, which is the the Windows version of it, and try my hand at actually doing. Uh, can I right click to save or copy? <gasps> oh, Anthony, you're on it, man! Look at that. Ooh, can I, what what does inspecting do? Oh, inspecting tells me the file size. Why do I need to know that? Okay, well, I guess if you're going to put something on there. But yeah, you could do open image, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Nice. So that, that brings up in preview. Yeah, you can right click. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do, and then React RE charts. 
if you're like, well, wait a minute, why'd you do two different charting libraries? Well, I did kind of two different charting libraries, true, to show that there were two different charting libraries. But I also did this because I wanted to show you how to, if your scenario was, I need to go get data from uh, a web service and then chart it, which is probably the most likely scenario. This shows you how to do that as well. I brought in node fetch. And then at the beginning, when we render this guy, the first thing we do is go over and do a fetch to go get some data. We do the we get the response back, and then we open up app with that data, and that's basically again server side rendering. Um, maybe this is the way some companies use add a logo to the console when you're trying to inspect their source in the browser. Could be, could be. Yeah, I I use it when I yeah every time I start up my my terminal in the morning, or whatever I get this. So this is my my logo it's in every video. Got to get the branding going. Uh, okay, so yeah, this so this would be a nice starting point if that's what you need to do. If you need to go get some data from a server and then plot it, and then actually I think it's the, the prettiest of all the graphics. So let's go take a look. React a sixel. Recharts, I think it's called. Uh, okay, and then we'll do again. Do a yarn silent start, and there you go. How pretty is that? I mean, it's just I I just like that particular one. I think it's kind of bad that like behind here isn't one hundred percent. You know, saying yeah. What blue collar work do I do? I did construction mechanics. Well, uh, I do woodworking. <laughs> Uh, I I call it the Blue Collar Coder channel because I am not college educated. I actually taught myself how to code when I was 13 years old. And uh, not that blue collar work, but I, I and I take a, a, a workman like a approach to coding, a very practical approach. And then so I want to emphasize that the practicality part of it uh, when it came to uh, to this channel. So every every video that I do is about giving you guys tools so you can learn more, have more fun, expand your minds, try out different things. And that, that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's my Sixel stuff for today. But I did want to cover the uh, Redux stuff from last week's uh, video because I didn't get a chance to do uh, the the live stream because of, of uh, Thanksgiving and my daughter was home and we wanted to go out and get some, uh, do our, our traditional poke run. So, you know, that family comes first. Um, yeah, awesome. It, you know, it's amazing how many people uh, aren't college educated. And when I started in, in this job, um, I was very self-conscious about it, honestly. Um, I, you know, a, a lot of jobs were like, you had to have a PhD and this and that. And I knew I had the skills and I could make stuff happen. Uh, but, you know, you just didn't have the the, 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 the tickies. And I didn't have the tickies, honestly, because my grades in, in, in school were terrible. So, I you know, and the one thing I could do was code. So... <laughs> As it turns out, coding turns out to be a good uh, lifelong skill. And I worked my way up to principal engineer, and people don't seem to mind. So <laughs> seems to be working out. And you guys like the channel, so hey, you know, I'm there. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, wow. Let's, let's shift gears like 180,000% and now talk about uh, this this app that we've been working on over in and learning, learning React with. So the introduction to React course is now up to uh, 12 different shows destined to be, wow, probably 16 uh, so far. And currently, we just had gone through um, doing, oh, yeah, Postal, you and me are all about the, the new wave of state managers. Yeah, a lot of a lot of tangents, a lot of tangents, but that's what you expect. This is a live stream on the Friday, so you get all kinds of fun stuff, and I I I, I like to go wherever you you folks want to go with it. 
Um, the the weekly videos are very, uh, you know, we, very focused. Um, you know, I try to keep them between five and fifteen minutes, but I do like to just jam on on Fridays and just have a chat and talk. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So yes, I mean, actually, Postal is not far off the mark here. So. What we're doing in this one is we had, in the previous episode, we had migrated uh, this Pokemon system, which allows you to go and uh, filter on Pokemon, as well as, you know, woo, that's not good. That that blew up. That's not good. Um, <laughs> oh, there we go. Let's see. Object, uh, oh, we'll have to check on that. We've, we've got a bug, my friends. So, yeah, let's see. Okay. Um, we had gone and mo moved from a cascade of React states, a React use states. So we had, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but oftentimes nowadays you'll see like up at the, up at the front of components, you'll see a bunch of like React use state, boom, 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 boom. And my point in the previous video was to say, well, okay, you could use this thing called use reducer instead and use reducer allows you to have a more complex uh, state system. So in this case, the state includes uh, the complete list of Pokemon that we got from our server. It has the filter text, which was this. Oh yeah, I know, Postal. Oy, okay. So there are so many options uh, and I can't wait to take a, can you drop the link to effector? In uh, the, the, the chat, I would, I, I'm going to go check that out. Um, okay, so I've got the selected Pokemon, which is what happens when you click on this one, which is obviously a bug. So whatever, whatever's going on is, is, a, is a bug with that guy. And then there's filtered Pokemon, which is when I do, you know, this, like, bulb, I get the, the list of the filtered Pokemon. So if without the filter, then Pokemon equals filter Pokemon. Uh, yes. Well, Kubli, that's H Kubli. That is what we're going to do. We are going to port this to Redux. I just want to get everybody up to speed on where we're going. Uh, okay. So where does this reuse, where does this reducer come from? It comes from store.ts and, oh, wow. Look at this. It's in TypeScript. Wow. I think this is where we left it in the, uh, original, in the live stream from last time. So this is gonna make my life fun. Now I've gotta do it in, in TypeScript, in Redux. Awesome. See, this is, this is good stuff. Exciting. Oh, thank you. Thank you for showing up and thank you for supporting the channel. Um, okay, so, well, Mr. Kubli, where should we start? I think we should probably start with going and adding in Redux and React Redux as dependencies. So let's go do that. I do too. I love TypeScript as well. I gotta say, I'm converted. I'm a fan. I've been using TypeScript exclusively at the at the new job. I actually changed jobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I'm, I, there are times when it's, when it kicks you in the butt a little bit, but it's a good kick in the butt. It's like a healthy kick in the butt from, from Redux. Uh, like, Hey, you know, you need to be more disciplined about this stuff. Um, okay. So I've added react and or Redux and react Redux. So Redux on its own is actually, uh, not connected to, it's just a, a state management system. And it's very similar to use reducer. It uses reducers and tracks based on reducers. So what I need to do is go back over here. Now that I've got that going, I'm going to go over here to my uh, store.ts and I'm going to import uh, create store from Redux. All right. So, so far, so good. And I talk about some ORMS and Postgres. That, funny you mentioned that, because we're actually uh, at the office uh, trying out Hasura on top of Postgres, which is a, a, a mechanism to take 
uh, a Postgres database and expose it via um, uh, in GraphQL. Super exciting. Um, okay, so over here, my reducer. The reducer remains exactly the same between uh, between use reducer and Redux, with one, one, one exception, and that's where uh, in Redux, by default, if you if you don't get an action, then what you're supposed to do is return the current state. And that's, I believe, how it gets the, the state. So, and now we're also going to uh, use create store to create the, the store based on this reducer. So we're going to export that as the default. Create store. And then what are we calling this again? We're calling this Pokemon filter reducer. There you go. And there you go. There's our store. Awesome. So why is this why is this giving us troubles? Uh, okay, so doo -doo 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 -doo, gave the following error. All right. Uh, parameter state and state are. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Yeah. So in the original video, this is all right. Let's let's see if I can do this. Preference for typing your actions on your reducers. Well, you know what. Um, I don't use Redux in combination with TypeScript. Uh, currently, the applications that I work on either use, mostly just use use state or use MobX. Um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, I believe you have to give an initial state uh, also for the reducer. Okay, so is that true? Uh, reducer, okay, enhance, no, I mean, create store should just, okay, so it, take a reducer, yeah, okay, uh, okay, so, as reducer, I guess, reducer, reducer, mm, nope, don't like that, ugh, this is gonna be a lot easier if I'm not in TypeScript on this one, because I don't know TypeScript and, um, oh, wow, that's not good either. Uh, okay, reducer, there you go. As reducer, hey, like that, woo! Okay, cool, well, now that's good. So, let's see, so we wanna bring in the store. And on this side, we're going to bring in a provider as well as use selector, use selector. Oh, nope. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry. It, it doesn't know the context yet. Redux. There you go. Cool. As well as use selector and use dispatch. So use selector is how you go and get data. And then uh, use dispatch is how you get access to that dispatch, which allows you to send commands to uh, the producer or send actions. So we need to wrap this thing in a provider, which is given to us by React Redux. So let's go and take a look here. So provider. Oops, not, not don't close it out yet. And then we need to give it the store. And then we need to shift this over, da, 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 provider. Okay, looking pretty good. So that, okay. Actually, that's probably the wrong place to put that. What I really wanna do is put it down here because what this guy app actually needs access to the stuff that would be in that provider. So let me do that. Writer store equals store. Anthony, I love how you put the little uh, emphasis on the E in schema. That's hilarious. I've never seen that before. Schema. It's very, it's very cool. All right. So uh, let's just try out starting out by porting this, this use effect down here. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to go and get the dispatcher by using use dispatch. And then I'm, that's going to run against that. So we can get rid of this dispatch at the moment. And then I need to go get this list of Pokemon. And the way that I do that instead of do, uh, to get that, I need to use a selector. So that's how I get access to data. So I'm going to do Pokemon and then give it use selector. And then that takes a function, which gives the, gets the entire state. So I'm just going to peel off Pokemon and return that. Can't take credit for that. Okay, there you go. Well, I still like it. So there, <laughs> there you go. It's it's good stuff. Okay, so uh, let me save that out, and I think we should just keep on porting stuff. So one thing that we no longer need this Pokemon context provider because the Redux provider is actually providing that. So let's get rid of that. And then we need to go through the different components, like for example, this Pokemon filter, Pokemon table, and Pokemon info, all of which get or dispatch part of the, of the stuff, um, and then port that over. So let's go take a look at those. So, okay. I'm gonna keep that. I don't need store from there, but I do. we do need this. So what do we need from the state? Well, we need the filter. So let's just do a couple of use selectors if we need them. That's gonna be that. And we need the dispatch. So that looks about good. Okay, cool. But we don't have, uh, we don't need use context anymore. And let's see, over here in app.js, we need to bring in our, get rid of that. I like it when you can remove code. Removing code's always fun. Moving code is my favorite way to, to work with code. Kill it. Kill it fire. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think that one's doing pretty good. Let's take a look over Pokemon info. Does that, oh, that also uses some state stuff. Cool. So let's let's go the, do this again. And let's see. Do we do any dispatches? We do not do dispatches. So there's no, no reason for that. So let's go get that selected Pokemon. From there, oops, hello. And somebody asked me before, by the way, how I do uh, this, which is extending that selection. Um, that's just command D, and it was literally one of my favorite parts of all things VS Code. I don't care what people do in other, uh, oh, that's interesting, okay, is that true? Why is selected Pokemon not part of that? Um, maybe that's our bug. Okay, so let me let me just continue on. Okay, hold on. Actually, let me let's try and debug why this is doing this because this we actually have some strong typing in here because of we're doing in, we're doing TypeScript. So uh, is that the problem? Selected Pokemon. Okay, what's it actually telling us? Um, binding element select Pokemon has an Im implicit any type. Why is that? That should be a Pokemon type. I mean, it's either Pokemon or null. So it should be one of those two. Pokemon filter state. But this is the same, this is where the issue was. Um, TS leaves un. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's press on uh, and and keep going, and we'll we'll figure this out. I have faith. I have faith that together we can figure this all out. Um, okay, so this is just a display display uh, component, so I don't need that. And then, oh, so here we are using context again. And I think we use both context. Okay, we use dispatch, and we also use this filter Pokemon. So let's. Grab that. Okay. Oops. <laughs> this is definitely the wrong place for that. Okay. And let's see. 
Might be in your function signature. Or might need to add the type of the param if you're not if it's not inferred. Yeah, probably. Uh, we'll get back there. I I have faith. We have we'll get back there. And let's see. So I want to grab this one and that one. Okay. And then this is guys just a filter Pokemon. And away you go. Again, there you go. Look at that. I think that's about it. Let's uh, let's take a look. So, how bad is this blowing up? Let's take a look. Any any bets on how bad this is gonna blow up? I'm I'm I think this has got like a ten percent chance of actually working. Ooh, there you go. Let's see. Uh, oh, it doesn't like that we don't have. Oh, uh, really? Okay, sure. Why not? That's an easy one to fix. Although I should do it in dev mode. You know, it's 2020. I mean, types should be in React Redux. Come on, seriously, right? I mean, let's, yeah. Shouldn't have to do this. In the meantime, let me go catch up on comments. Forgetting to use remove unused imports is the worst. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, okay. Maybe in your function signature. Yeah, we could go take a look at that while we're, while we're waiting on types to, like, do this. Like, seriously? You know what it is? I didn't need... Oh. I didn't use yarn. I used NPM. Yeah, that's a problem. Anyway, uh, well, you know what? I... Fine. I don't really want a package lock in there anyway. And that's going to do, that's going to be, yes. Thank you very much for that. That was much faster. I don't care which one you use, NPM or Yarn, just pick one, Jack. Uh, okay, yeah, so there you go. Selected uh, default root state. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So let's take a look and see what we can, uh, so we're not going to be able to see anything until we get that. Uh yeah. Thank you, Postal. Did you uh, put a link to that effector in there? I mean, I, I can find it on my own if you didn't, but, you know, it'd be super awesome if you would before you head off, I, although I know 3 a.m. is super late. Okay. Um, oh, that's, okay. So let's go and take a look over in our store. And we do have the filter state. So, and it's exported. So maybe I can kind of coerce that thing. Let's take a look. If I bring in that and then I say this it doesn't like that okay uh, all right how about uh, poof, that no is that wrong uh, oh 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 it's a oh 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 okay it's a JSX file so am I in the right place Oh, no, it's in this file. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. Uh, okay, let me go and do that then. Pokemon info. All right. And we're going to use selector. All right, and then hold on. Boy. Pokemon filter state. There you go. Okay, let's give that a try. Ooh, hey, yo. Object was type unknown. Why is that? No. No. No, there's nothing unknown about this. Nothing unknown. Don't don't play me like that. Uh, okay. Is it Pokemon? Nope. Uh, as Pokemon. God, that's ugly. God, that's ugly. There is definitely a better way to do that, and I'm not doing it right. Uh, okay. What is going on? All right. There we go. Yeah, I wish. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Well, that's interesting. So none of this is JSX. Oh, God. All right. Hold on. This is why I probably should have 
prepared a little bit more on this one. I, my apologies. It is fun to just play around like this, but I'm going to go and move this back to a JSX file and see if that helps because I'm not, you know, this is the middle of a, it might be in the initial state. Okay. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, thank you, Anthony. You are the, you're the man of the plan right there. Yes. Look at that. I forgot to go and give it an initial state. You are so right. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let me go and cheat a little bit here. And pop that in there. And also filtered Pokemon is that. And now, oh, okay, well, hold on, let me restart the server, because it's like, oh, no, you changed the file extension. Well, the Sixel stuff was fun. Hey, Anthony for the win. Look at you, Anthony. Thank you so much. Hey, okay, so let's, uh, so it looks like we're back to the same crash, which is cool. So we have... We have ported to Redux, and that's good. Um, but let's go and see what, what our issues are here. So if I click on more information, then, well, we're getting some, some stuff with that. Uh, let's, let's fix that first, just so we have it. So Pokemon table, I think needs a key. Oh, yeah, okay, so there's no key in here. Key is, you know, Pokemon.id or something. Yeah, there you go. And invalid prop type of Pokemon of type object expects an array. Let's go fix that. So there you go. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so no more no more console. Mm. Pokemon ID of type number expects a string. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, two string. There you go. Voila. Are you are you happy now? Okay, whatever. I'm 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 through with, with dealing with you React messages in the middle of my live stream. You're just not being nice. Okay. Uh let's let's try and see, find you know figure out why I'm blowing up on at the end here though. Uh okay, so store. So if I if I set a selected Pokemon, then I'm returning the state as well as the selected Pokemon with a payload. That looks good to me. I'm 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 sold. What's going on over here? So select a Pokemon. So let's uh, let's console log that out and see if if I'm doing the wrong thing. So click on that, and it's null currently. It about makes sense. And then that looks good. Objects are not valid as React child. Um, what's your problem? Uh, okay, so just to be really janky about it, let's hold on. Let's just do that first. Nope, doesn't, doesn't dig on that. So select a Pokemon, select a Pokemon that name. This should be right. Like, what's the... Okay, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so that works. Uh, oh, <laughs> I know what this is. They got a really weird data structure in here. Uh, the name is actually has four different translations in it. So that's what that is. Okay. You know, you think that something's a really big problem and it turns out just to be that. So anyway, we can go with the English, you know, the English name or the Japanese, Japanese name, whichever we want, you know, uh, let's see. Yeah. There. Hey, cool. I'm in. I'm sold. That's actually a lot cooler looking. Uh, here we go. Let's do both. Actually, you know what? We'll put, we'll put the Japanese first and make it an H1. This is, is way cooler. And then we'll put this guy in parentheses. It's a Japanese game anyway, right? There you go. Oh, that looks great. I like that. Okay. Cool. 
So we have in one single video, thanks to Anthony. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We have looked at Sixel today. We've, we've done cool high resolution graphics in our uh, terminal and done all kinds of fun stuff with that. And then we did the, uh, the use reducer to, re <laughs> to uh, Redux port, all even with TypeScript nagging me incessantly about stuff which is great. Thanks to Anthony for the, the help out on that. Um, I did want to throw out a, a, uh, a high five or a, an encouragement to try out. I haven't actually done this myself, but a friend of mine just told me about this, the advent of code. Apparently there's, it's a, a 30 day, 30 day game where you just get like a different code puzzle every day. And, you know, this is really just a way for you to, you know, kind of keep up and, and do some fun stuff. So I'll, I'll drop that in the uh, comment section. Thinking about playing that myself, although honestly, with the backlog of all the cool videos that I want to put together for you all, uh, I really don't have a heck of a lot of time to do stuff like this. But it is cool, and apparently the projects are usually between like 30 minutes and an hour. So the kind of stuff that you can do while you're like binge watching Star Trek Discovery or, or Mandalorian, although I probably wouldn't waste Mandalorian or either of those with, with coding at the same time. Those are shows that you actually have to pay attention to because they're so good. Uh, okay. Well, um, yeah, as, as per usual, I am going to head over to the discord server and you can ask me, I'll just be in the general video stream over there. And if you want to ask me any questions, feel free to do that. Um, it's not recorded, so it's very casual. I just want to get feedback from you, you folks about how you like the videos. If you have new ideas for new, new shows and new content, I'm always down for that. Or you just want to talk about what you got plans for your weekend and just chill out. That's fine, too. So I'll see you over on the Discord channel. There is a link to that up in the, uh, the description uh, or, or down <laughs> in the description for this video. And uh, I'll see you over there in a bit. All right. See you later. Be happy. 